Hi, I'm Melissa Blair. I am the director of Muncie Animal Care and Services. Uh, we are located at 901 West Regan Road. We're out by the airport. We have moved from our old location on Garkey Street. I know a lot of people don't know that, so whenever we get phone calls and people need to bring strays to us or things of that nature, we do always remind them that we have moved and that we are on Regan. We are open Monday through Friday from 10 to 5.30. We are closed from noon to 1 for lunch, and Saturdays we're open from noon to 4. Um, we get a lot of calls, people wondering about um, volunteer opportunities. We always take volunteers on any days that we're open. There's not any long paperwork that needs to be filled out. You just come in, show up, have the love for the animals and want to help us, and we'll put you to work. Um, we have two free roam cat areas that we just have a lot of people that they don't even want to come to adopt, but they just like to come and hang out with the cats. We do have play yards out back on nice days. People can take the dogs out. They can run and play. We have an education room. People can bring their own dogs in if they're looking to adopt, and they can do meet and greets that way, so we make sure everybody gets along. Um... Another thing we also offer, we do doggy date nights or doggy dates. Um, people, let's say we have some Ball State students, they can't have animals, they miss their animals at home. They can come for the day and pick out one of the dogs that they're interested in. You can take them to the park, they can play, you can take them for walks. Um, and if you want to keep them overnight, you can keep them overnight and you can get your puppy loving in without having to do the adoption. Um, so there's a lot of fun things that we have going on out here all the time. And we do try to make sure that the public can come out and see the wonderful uh, facility that we have. And like I said, get to interact with the animals. And we have adoption specials from time to time. We'll put that on our Facebook page and uh, let people know if we do have run those specials. We do have a couple of really special things that have happened for us this year. We do um, work on getting donations all the time and we also work on receiving grants. And we were so fortunate this year to be the recipient of a grant from Petco. Now this grant was for $50,000. And this grant is specifically to be used for spays and neuters. So we're very, very excited about that. We also received another grant from Pet Finder, um, which a lot of people can go on Pet Finder and look for animals not only in this area, but um, other areas. They gave us a grant for $2,000, and that is to reduce adoption fees. So we're, we're happy to announce that. And we'll put it up on our Facebook page. Um, when we're going to do those reduced adoption fees. So always, if you need any information about what we have going on here, the wonderful things we've been awarded, like our grants, we always just put it on our Facebook page. So if you have any questions, just check our Facebook page or call us here at 747-4851. This is the cat intake, and this is where we process all the cats that come in um, from up front, where we bring them back here. They usually are chip red to see if they have a chip in them or not. Um, we vaccinate them um, and then they're put in a nice clean little uh, area with food and cat litter. And um, if they're stray, we're waiting on their family to come get them. Or uh, if they're never um, reclaimed, then they go on out to Kitty City to find a forever home. And that's what intake is. We have. Um, Doc, who unfortunately Doc had to uh, come to us because his family was moving away and they couldn't take her with them. So she's here. Uh, Lillian's a stray that we had. So each cat gets cat litter and a nice clean bed and food and water. So this is the I-75 
isolation room, so if they are brought into intake, um, if they end up sick, um, or if there is an injury or something like that, they're brought over to isolation so that we can keep an eye on them, monitor them, take them to uh, the vet if necessary, and medication is given to them over here. So this is isolation, the same kind of thing. They have cat litter, fresh bed, fresh food and water every day. So this is uh, our isolation room. This is Kitty City, and on this we have A, Kitty City A, and this is Kitty City B. The kitties outside on this part is the banks. Um, we have kitties out here, we have kitties in the rooms, um, and there's about 25 cats in each of the Kitty City rooms. So um, when they come out of intake, uh, we have a little area for them or um, a room for them. Um, we will actually take them out of intake and they'll come in here. So they're ready to find their forever homes. Mm. So. Um, we can always, here at the shelter, we can always use some uh, donations. Uh, donations of all kinds. We need cat litter. We need cat food, dry and moist cat food, kitten food. Um, we also need bedding. We can always use rugs, bedding, uh, pillows. Um, the dog food, we can use moist dog food, um, we can use the dog treats, um, we can always use donations here at the shelter, so. I have been in an animal rescue for 25 years, and I tell everybody how blessed I am that I get to get up every day and I get to come into my job that I absolutely love, and I get to work with wonderful people, and we are able to make a difference every day in the lives of animals that need us. But I tell everybody that not only do we help animals in what we do, and that we help the humans. Um, 25 years ago, I got my very first pet as an adult. His name was Harley. He was a little Shih Tzu, and I loved him desperately. And it got me to thinking, how in the world could anybody ever be cruel to something that is so precious? Um, and it just so happened that I had a friend that had seen an article in the newspaper about ARF, Animal Rescue Fund, needing donations and needing help. And so my friend and I went and we got some dog food and some cat food. And we went to ARF and we pulled in the driveway and I was just in awe as soon as I got out and um, walked in the facility and I saw all those precious animals. And the funny thing is that the day I walked in and I dropped that dog food off, I knew that this is where I needed to be. And they were so wonderful to take me in as a volunteer. And I was there for many years. I volunteered seven days a week. That's how much I love the place. And I was able to learn so much. And eventually I was able to become the director of ARF. So it is my beginning. And I am proud to say that I loved and enjoyed my time at ARF in Animal Rescue. Now I have moved over to the animal control side and um, I'm, I'm so glad that I'm able to help animals in a whole different way. So again, I'm just so very blessed at the life that I've had in the 25 years that I've had an animal rescue. I've enjoyed every minute of it. What we do here, I think a lot of people might be a little confused on exactly what our role is or some of the things that happen to come our way. Basically, we are animal control, and our main job that we do most days is we're out catching animals that are running at large. We get numerous phone calls every day. We go and we pick up those animals, we bring them back here, and we post a picture on our Facebook page so the owners can see that this is where their dogs are and they can come pick them up. We get welfare checks too. 
Um, we have people that are concerned if they have a neighbor's dog that maybe is not being taken care of properly, that is outside in the elements, that doesn't have a dog house, that they don't see food or water. So we go and we do welfare checks. Um, in the course of our welfare checks, we also like to educate. We like to educate the public on what our ordinances are and what is required if you're going to leave a pet outside. They need dog houses that are insulated with straw in the winter months when it's cold. A lot of people will put blankets down and that just does not provide adequate warmth for the animals. It can freeze. So in the winter months, we do like to get donations of straw and we educate again, like I said, of uh, what needs to be in the dog house. And we do give out free straw when we have it available to us. Um, that is the main two things that we do are running at larges and animal welfare checks. We also will get calls of animals that are dead in the road and we do pick them up as well. So, um, and I always joke and I've said it a couple times, but everybody, we, we do all things animals, but we don't do groundhogs in the back of the yards. We have people that call us that think that we deal with wildlife and we don't. We do not deal with wildlife. And the fact that if it's alive, if you have a groundhog or a raccoon in your backyard, we are not able to come in and pick up that wildlife. And I think a lot of people get a little frustrated when they call us and we tell them that really is not the service we provide but we do try to push them in the right direction to help them get the answers they need if they do have a nuisance wildlife in their yard. I'm, I spoke earlier about our Facebook page. Um, social media has become a very, very effective tool in animal rescues. Um, it helps get a lot of animals adopted. And like I mentioned earlier, when we pick up lost pets, it will help reunite owners with their pets that we have. The other thing that it does, it helps in donations. If we're ever running low on kitten food or cat litter, we just put a little message up that we need those items and people see that and they really help us out. They bring it in. A lot of people always ask what, what do you need if we don't have the post up and I tell them anything that your cat or your dog would need and bring it in mass. Um, we are so fortunate to the community. I've always said how lucky we are to be living in the community in which we live because it is so full of animal lovers. And when you do put the plea out, they do come and they do help. So at any given time, we are always in need of cat litter. We go through cat litter a lot. We get a really big influx of cats in during kitten season, which is coming up. So it seems like we never have enough kitten food, litter, other things that we need. Again, that people don't think of, it's kitten season. We have kittens to come in. We need milk replacers. We need bottles, heating pads. Um, if you ever want to donate and have any questions, again, just call us and we'll let you know exactly what we're in need of at that time. We have a wonderful staff out here at Muncie Animal Care and Services. Right here is Perry, one of our animal control officers. Sorry, Christy. And we obviously have a little sick cat here that we're taking care of. Was this a stray? Yes. This was a little stray cat we picked up. So Perry's taking care of him. This is Ashley. She works at our front desk. Hi. And then there's Brandy. She's an animal control officer too. <laughs> This place is non-stop. It is rocking and rolling all the time. There's one of my dog tech kennel personnel. She takes care of our dogs. She knows all about them. She loves them and she takes care of them every day.